Hello again by thanking the wonderful staff of the Water and Sewage Corporation who stayed at their post in notable numbers during this strike exercise. Of our 422 member staff, including 75 managers, only 30 to 40 members of staff participated in the strike. We thank our hard-working staff for their service to the public and to the corporation. Today, Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, directed that the dispute of both unions be referred to the Industrial Tribunal. Pursuant to Section 72.2 of the Industrial Relations Act, the Prime Minister directed the Minister of Labor to refer both matters to the Industrial Tribunal, or matters affecting both unions. For Section 72A and B, 72.2 A and B, WSC provides an essential service and referral to these issues to the tribunal or referral of these issues to the tribunals in the public's interest. A short while ago, I received a letter from the Minister of Responsibility for Labor, and the letter concludes that this serves to notify you that I prefer the disputes which have given rise to the strike action to the Industrial Tribunal. Prior to saying that, it noted that these disputes threatened the public's interests. Copies of the referral have been sent to the Water and Sewage Corporation and have been advised, have been served upon the respective union leaders. As such, the strike is over and we expect that all staff will return to work tomorrow. The Corporation greatly values and appreciates our staff and we thank you for all that you do. Out of an abundance of caution, the government has assigned to the Royal Bahamas Defense Force officers to assist in guarding our major installations and ensuring that our loyal customers are not impacted by any act of sabotage. The Defense Force is actively engaged. Since yesterday evening, they have been moving around with our teams. These officers are ensuring that all of the critical meters and valves that our 14 critical sewer stations and plants are all safeguarded. A year ago, following union action, the water supply was sabotaged and disrupted to further sabotage to our sewer stations and other facilities. The police are also actively patrolling key sites. Sites such as the Blue Hills Hydro Tower, the Windsor and Winton stations are being monitored 24-7 by the control room via CCTV. Intermittent checks were made by designated water and sewage teams throughout last night. We thank the Royal Bahamas Defense Force and the Royal Bahamas Police Force for their support and hard work. In recent time, the corporation has moved to realign, to heighten its efficiency. And we have commenced various institutional strengthening and other initiatives to undergird our thrust for greater employee productivity, to support staff morale, and to better measure output and underscore institutional reform. Given the above, the corporation has determined to, pursuant to, and in line with our organizational interests and mandate, commence a few institutional improvements and changes that also include transfers of both managers and non-managers in an effort to right-size departments and to ensure greater efficiency in essential areas. In recent days, WSC determined to transfer 11 of our 70-plus managers into departments where we believe their expertise and or experience can add value, improvement, and greater efficiency to those areas. There are a few other departments where the corporation will be looking to make shifts and transfers at both the management and non-management levels in an effort to strengthen our organizational standing, particularly as WSC evaluates the restructuring and realignment of departments. For example, waste and leaks has now been merged with our construction department. All managers were given the customary two weeks notice before taking up their new assignments. We are also about to engage a local human resources consultant to assist with our employee effectiveness program 
review of staff profiles, particularly non-managerial staff, and various other human resources matters. WSC wishes to advise members of the management union that the corporation wishes to resolve the outstanding industrial agreement and continues to work with our managers in strengthening the corporation. When we took office, we inherited an unfinished union agreement where the contention was an Article 29, among other smaller issues. Upon the board's appointment, we discovered that managers had not had a new industrial agreement since 2013, and the board was appointed in 2017. On inquiry, we were informed that there was a deal in place. However, the then president refused to sign the agreement without the inclusion of Article 29. To include Article 29 would do the following. One, require WSC, WSC to wait for a 90-day period or until the union's president determines if he wishes to bid on a contract or not. Two, those bidders and select members of the union would form a company to bid on contracts from WSC, all while remaining employed at the corporation. For us, and the previous government of affairs, this was tantamount to a gross conflict of interest. Who would then evaluate the contracts? If persons have ideas about project estimates given their position at WSC, how would that work? We inherited all of the aforesaid. This has been going on in 2013, and we've been seeking to resolve it. The refusal by the then president to sign an agreement without Article 29 has been the stalemate for six years over two different governments. Remarkably, based upon correspondence with WSC, the former government also expressed serious reservations about signing an agreement that was inclusive of an Article 29. As I said earlier, we are desirous of arriving at an amicable industrial agreement with our managers. Our managers are very important to us, and we want to resolve all issues. That said, the management union is at a crossroads, and as such, WSC has been unable to recognize either of the two persons asserting their right to the presidency. The corporation has been consulting with its attorneys on this matter, and given that consultation, we share the following. In recent time, Mr. Edna Rule and his executives filed an action in the Supreme Court. That action asserted that the recent elections called by the Department of Labor were illegitimate and that the result of the election was thereby illegitimate. This is an extant matter that is currently before the court that is sub judice and subject to judicial review and determination. Based on the legal advice we received, we have been advised that the court may determine to either have fresh elections or recognize a particular president. Moreover, both Mr. Rule and Montgomery Ferguson Miller have asserted their claims to the presidency with both individuals writing under the letterhead of the WSMU and both signing off as president. Given the above and the extant court matter, the corporation is unable to recognize the presidency by either Mr. Miller or Mr. Rule, and awaits a ruling of the court. Moreover, the corporation, I'm sorry, unfortunately, the dilemma the corporation faces is one where WSC is unable to determine which persons claiming the presidency and the executive team of that president, which one of them have the capacity to bind the union in any agreement with the corporation. So as it stands, the union appears to have two presidents, and the matter, as I said, is subject to a decision of the court. In a recent meeting, General Manager Albert Donaldson informed Mr. Montgomery Ferguson Miller of this impasse and told him that, at this time, he could only meet with him in his capacity as an employee and manager of the corporation. The next hearing is in April of this year. So again I conclude by stating that the corporation appreciates and values our managers. We appreciate and value all of our staff. 
But as it relates to our managers, our managers are our day-to-day -day and operational leaders carrying out WSE's policies and mandates. We want to thank all of our staff for their work this week, and we will thank them in a more tangible way later. Thank you all.